Good afternoon, everybody. This is Stan and Jack for theartofchart.net, and today we're doing a webinar on trading psychology. So this is our second in the series on risk management. Okay, so we're doing a five-part series series on risk. Uh, we've already done part one, and uh, this is strictly about trading psychology. And before I get into um, uh, this uh, uh, trading psychology webinar, uh, I want to just encourage questions first of all. And so there's a questions tab and go to webinar. Um, please uh, uh, put that. Uh, uh, please put your questions in the uh, webinar tab. Uh, Jack, can you see my screen at this point? I can. Yep, I can. No worries. Okay. Very good. Uh, our disclaimer, just quickly, I want to go over that is uh, that we we are an educational website. So we do what we do for educational purposes. We share technical analysis. We hope people learn from it. And what we're trying to do here is a risk management series. And uh, there are three parts to risk, which I will, I will explain in a moment. For those of you who may not be familiar with, with the Art of Chart, um, what I want to show you on, on the, the Art of Chart is what we do. Um, what we have is uh, subscription-based services. We uh, do technical analysis. And so these instruments you're seeing coming across the screen right here, these are the ones we cover. We do a 30-day free trial. A lot of places do a seven-day free trial or a 10-day. We don't think you can really get what we do unless you have a 30-day free trial. So, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a long time for a free trial, but you certainly get to see the private Twitter feed. You get to see how we work and you get to understand how we manage risk. <clears throat> Our free webinars are always on the front page. At the bottom here, you'll see that we always have two, uh, three blogs uh, that, that are important on the front page. One is our free webinar post, which is where this recording will be when we're done. Uh, second, we have a free options trading service trying to illustrate how to manage risk, how traders can manage risk using options, uh, using our, our technical analysis, and also the weekly call, which is about trading futures and uh, how to manage risk in trading futures. So uh, that's uh, a, a quick introduction to the website. And uh, with that said, Jack, uh, let's start on our outline for the day. All right. Uh, our risk management in trading series, we're really talking about these three things, tr trading systems, money management systems, and the psychology of investing. And today is the first part of the psychology side of things. We, we kind of talk about all three in an overlapping way. It's kind of hard to separate them. But trader psychology, uh, we're going to talk about what it is, what the trading mindset is. We're going to talk about the uh, what I would call the destructive side of trading, which is uh, things like fear, greed, overconfidence, denial, rationalization. We'll, we'll get into all of, these, all, all of these things. But also, how to use those emotions to your advantage. Okay, and we'll give you some examples of that. We'll talk about having a plan. Uh, we'll talk about expectations, which I think is one of the main things that, that, that hurt traders, to be honest. And uh, one of the other big things around having a plan is, uh, is having a plan in terms of where you're going to take a loss and actually having the stomach to do it. And there are so many traders that carry trades and carry trades and carry trades because they don't know how to take a loss. So we'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about reviewing your performance, which is important uh, because, you know, if you have an expectation that you're going to make 15 handles a day on, on the e-mini day trading, for example, um, you know, you, your actual performance may inform you that your expectations are way out of line. OK, so you got to trade inside of the skill set that you currently have. OK, identify where you need to strengthen it and, of course, you know, try to do that, of course. So we're going to kind of walk through the outline. That's kind of it. And we're going to be guided by your questions. So I just want to encourage questions and we'll take them as we go through the webinar. OK, so, uh, Jack, with that said, um, let's uh, you and I just have a conversation about uh, psychology of trading and, and what it is and, and what is a trader's mindset m mindset. Let's let's do the first two bullets. What are your thoughts? All right. Well, I think the um, I think one of the many of the automatic reactions we have as well humans um, don't actually work in trading at all. Um, the um, a lot of the natural reactions to protect ourselves, etc., actually um, tend to work against us in trading. It's um, and really the um, the more I think you can keep emotion out of it, and the more you can keep a balanced head. Um, always have an objective outlook. Um, the way I like to think of it is you're just doing math problems. Um, you're just playing a mathematical game. It's not for money. It's just playing the game. 
I like games, um, so I mean that really works for me. But uh, but the main thing is, you know, you've got to just always be objective. You always got to be cool. There's no such thing really as right and wrong. There's no such thing as certainty. Um, you've just you're just playing a game, and the aim is to win. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely agree. Uh, I'll add to that, and uh, a trading mindset for me, and what is trader psychology? It's about self-awareness, first of all. The most important thing is self-awareness. Are you aware of when you're stressed? For example, are you aware of when you fall into certain negative uh, negative habits? Okay, and can you get yourself out of it? Okay, so you know, trader psychology is about uh, is about self awareness, uh, but the trading mindset is really kind of about uh, really three things. One is you got to know what your risk is. I mean, you have to have a plan. You got to know what your risk is. Okay, so in every trade, I know my risk. Okay, second is I focus on the execution of my plan. That's all I'm really focused on are those two things. And the third thing is I'm focused on the process of trading, okay? I'm not watching my P&L. People that watch their P&L or think about money, I think the minute you start doing that, you're done, okay? You're done, okay? So all there well, is – One of the things I'm talking about with is just math problems. You mustn't think about the money. You mustn't think, I'm risking this, uh, yeah. you know, um, Immediately, you start getting emotional about it. As soon as you start looking at a position where I'm, for instance, at the moment I'm in a um, I'm in a CL short and um, I'm looking I'm looking for a ten buck decline. Um, but the fact is, I'm not thinking about money. Um, otherwise, there's a huge urge to cash it up after you've made um, after your two bucks towards your time. Yeah, right. So 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 trading ma- mindset. What's my risk? I'm going into a trade. Okay. What am I willing to lose? It's the ante. Okay, if I'm playing poker, for example, I have to I have to place a bet. I have to ante to play the game. Okay, so you know what's my risk? What am I willing to lose? Second, I focus on the execution of whatever it is that I'm doing, whatever the plan is, whether it's a, a day trade or whether it's a, a swing trade to last a couple of months. Okay, and the last thing, and this really builds on what Jack just said, which is I'm not needing to be right. Okay, I don't care if I'm right. I make money when I'm wrong. Okay, and I'll show you how how I do that. But you know, it's about making money. It's not about being right. Okay, it's so never about being right. I could be wrong about our short short on oil. Okay, I'm already short oil. Okay, and uh, I, I'm already out a third at this point, and my stops at even. And and to be honest, I've already made money. So I could be wrong. It could rally tomorrow, and I would not care. Okay, so and and I don't mean not care as in you know there's something for me to learn maybe there about you know you know the forecast into July is 40 buck oil. Okay, so we'll see uh, what happens, but you know it's it's about it wouldn't, it wouldn't change your behavior. The, what you have on the table, what's happened on it, unless the actual plan has changed, unless the yeah. actual outlook has changed, the, um, then the original plan you made at the beginning stays valid until the end. Yeah, but but the thing is, it's like I have money in the bank. My risk is out of the trade. I'm at even, and you know what? It can go against me right now, and I'm fine. And so, you know, there's ways of managing your headset in terms of how you actually execute your trade. And so, tomorrow, it can back test a whole dollar. I'll be perfectly calm because it's like I got money in the bank. And as far as I'm concerned, it can go again, or 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 whatever. It could go lower and then go against me. And in that situation, I would still say, hey, I made a great trade. It, it, I did because I made money. I don't care if I'm right. I, I made. I say, in this particular instance, there's very good odds that it will backtest a whole dollar tomorrow. Yeah, I bet money it will. And you know what? I'll be calm and and cool as a cucumber because I'm managing my risk and I'm executing my plan. And money in the bank, and I take off a third of a trade. And you guys have seen me do that. Those of you who are subscribers and. We, we, we show our subscribers, you know, ways of trading and the last webinar talked about, you know, exiting a third and then where to exit your second third and so on and so forth. And it, it helps maintain your mindset, you know, and, and you care about, not, I don't care about being right. I care about making money. That's kind of how I, that's my shorthand for it. So uh, that's what I mean by trader mindset. And uh, that, that's what I think psychology is all about in terms of trading. So, um, yep. so um Jack, let's talk about the, the the emotional side of trading, or what I would call the destructive side of trading, which is the negative psychology. And uh, we have some of the stuff listed there: uh, fear and greed, and overconfidence and denial. And just jump into wherever you want to jump in. Okay. Well, the first thing I'd mention: um, there's a, there's a lot of different things that uh, obvious traps that people fall into. One of those is adding to losers. A lot of people only add to losers. 
Um, and if you're only adding to your losers, just mathematically, um, what you're doing is you're cherry picking your worst trades to be your biggest ones. Now, obviously, mathematically, that's not going to work. Um, that's unlikely to end well. Um, so, I mean, and the other thing is that if it went, if it's, if it's actually gone down outside your initial parameters, you don't need to add, you need to exit. Um, but again, that brings us to another point. People are very reluctant to exit, and that's because they believe in paper losses. Um, and there's no such thing. The idea that you're, you only crystallize a loss when you exit the trade is one of the most damaging delusions any trader can have, because it mm. will mean they will become married to losing positions. Um, whereas actually, you have to have your original rationale for the trade. If that rationale changes, you have to judge again on the trade. And if you don't, if it's no longer a good trade, you move on to the next one. There is always another trade. Um, you never ever get married to the worst ones because that way you can lose an awful lot of money. Um, if you wait till it's profitable, I remember there was a guy um, to mentioned to me a few years ago that um, he had a um, he had a short from 11.70 on SPX. Um, and but it was on a different time frame, so he wasn't worried about it. We never came back to 11:17. And occasionally, I wonder how that trade's doing. Um, and yeah. I think he got married to it, and he probably he probably got out of it for a huge loss. Um, yeah. And he shouldn't have done. Um, at the end of the day, once it once it gets out outside the parameters of your original plan, you're better off just dumping it and moving on. Yep, absolutely right. Um, and uh, that's where the ante to play poker comes in. It's like, what am I willing to lose? You get to that number you're done, okay, you're out, okay, so what I like to do is I like to take a third early, as and, and there's parameters for that, of course, but, you know, it, it helps with your mindset, so I want to talk about fear, and uh, I also want to talk about greed, because they're probably the two most powerful emotions in, in, in the human brain, and I think, I, I, I think we all, we all are cave people still, Okay, and so when there's a threat in front of us, whether it's a, 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 a saber-toothed tiger or whether it's a, a trading screen and I'm losing thousands of dollars, whatever the threat is, you know, our, our brain gets busy and we get, emotion is a natural thing that happens, okay? And so, you know, fear um, plays a role. And I was talking to a guy the other day. He's like, I can't hang on to a trade. I have a $25,000 account and I'm afraid of losing money. And I have a winning trade and I make two handles and I'm out, but it goes up six. And I'm like, okay, what's your plan? He doesn't have a plan, okay? So he, he, he without a plan, you're gonna fall into the trap, okay? But also as well, fear, 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 fear actually works the other way too, not just, um, and, and people that get out of trades early, very often that's, that's one of the reasons why. But the other side of fear is I'm afraid to take a loss. Okay, Jack said the one thing uh, about, about, you know, adding to a trade. Uh, a lot of people don't want to be stupid or dumb or, or be wrong. Okay. And they're and, afraid of admitting that they're wrong and they feel that exiting a losing trade is admitting that they're wrong. Absolutely. So what they do is they dollar cost average their trade up. So instead of being underwater 12 handles, I'm now underwater six handles. I feel better about myself. Uh, that's not what they actually say to me, but I, you know, you peel the onion skin back, and that's what you find out when you talk to people. And so, you know, it, it's it's not like as if um, uh, uh, it's not like as if we can get away from this stuff. This is this is this is just human. Okay, it's just human to have these emotions. Okay, especially if you're not disciplined or experienced as a trader. Okay. And we have, we have instincts, um, you know, the, the human mind has evolved to think in a certain way and it's evolved for good reasons, yep. generally speaking, but um, they don't work in every instance and trading is a, an instance where a lot of those don't work at all. Yep. Um, greed, okay, I'm, I'm like really jubilant, right? I'm jubilant because, and I'm really high, it's like I have a winning trade and I'm way ahead and like oil today, right? This is one of those situations where you might be jubilant. Big move, you know, I was short at 52 and, and whatever, okay? Um, that's a surefire sign, and this gets into using your emotions to your advantage. That's a surefire sign whenever I have that feeling is I, I, I exit a third. <laughs> right away as soon as I have that feeling because I, I know that that's about greed and I know that as soon as I have that experience it's like I guarantee it it's going to go against me so I have that jubilant feeling I take profits 
I mean, so, so you can use these feelings and, and this, uh, this managing emotion stuff to your advantage as well, okay? It's good to recognize it in yourself, but, you know, like for example, today, very, very frustrated with what the S&P did. Now, that's probably a sign that we're very close to a turn, by the way, okay? That's usually where I get frustrated, and I don't get frustrated very often, but, you know, so you can use your emotions to your advantage after you learn about how you respond to the market, okay? So that's just something about Because on that particular example that Stan's talking about, um, mm -hmm. the way that I've seen this happen, I've done it myself on occasion, is mm -hmm. that um, you, you're in a trade, you are jubilant, this is the best trade ever, you add to it at the point when you should be taking profit. Yep. It then comes back 50%. You're now, your profit has gone down to zero um, because it's come back 50% um, and you're back at zero. You can't face taking a loss and you exit. And then it goes on to the rest of the target. Every, I dare say more or less every trader has, has done that. Um, oh, he's sure. been, and and that is that is where you can the psychology can actually just take a really good trade and just knock you out of it for nothing. Yep, yep, absolutely. And I think it's important to talk about you know what is a good trade. Okay, so like like for example, what Jack just said. Let's say that uh, you're in the oil trade and you don't have any profit yet and you're hanging on to it because you're jubilant or maybe even you're trying to add to it right now okay or maybe you're not adding to it maybe you're just really happy with it and you're holding on to it right so uh you haven't really made a trade yet i mean you're in a trade but you haven't made a trade yet which means a round trip of some sort okay so you know let's say that you get out of let's say that you punch out right now because your plan was to capture three bucks Okay, and let's say that you, and, and let's just say that you've done that, almost $3 today, okay? We, we, we were a little bit shy of that, but uh, so, so let's just say that that was your plan. Your plan was to exit in, in the 48s and you exited in the 48s, right? Let's say tomorrow we go to 40s. How are you gonna feel about your trade? Just giving you guys a second to think about that, okay? Did I execute my plan? Did I make money? Yes. So that was a good trade. Some people will say, oh, you left money on the table. You can always second guess yourself. You can always beat yourself up. But my book is this, if you execute what you plan and you make money, that's a good trade. And it doesn't matter what happens afterwards. Uh, you, didn't have that, you didn't have a plan for that, did you? Okay, so you know, that's, that's the idea of trading. And the idea of trading is to make your planning consistent so that it, you execute well, consistently and you can consistently make money okay uh, Jack any thoughts about that yeah the leaving money on the um, a table is a reason to stay in trades too long I mean at the end of the day you know you have a rationale you have a plan you run it yeah and that and that's, that's the way it should be it should be it shouldn't you always have to try and keep an objective in your mind worrying mm -hmm. about you know, are you right? Are you wrong? Are you the best at seeing things as I spread? All these people on all these people on Twitter, who are absolutely devoted to being right. You know, I have an infallible list and whatever. It's all wrong. Um, the bulls and bears. It's not about teams. Um, it's not football. Um, it doesn't matter who wins. Um, yeah. As long as you're winning, that's, that's all that matters. That's it. That's exactly right. That's very very well said. Very well said. Uh, because I think I, I think it's it's about the either or mentality, you know. So so you get stuck in a um, you get stuck in a trade uh, a lot of times because you're you're um, you don't have the either or mentality. Okay, you have a one sided mentality, which which can be which can be be destructive, of course. Um, managing stress. Okay, let's. Uh, I just want to mention one thing about managing stress. Um, how do I say this? Okay, you're sitting in front of your uh, screen. You're watching your uh, your your trades. You might have one or two or three or four on whatever. And are you aware of what your experience is? Okay, are you sweating? I mean, I know this one guy. He talks about you know, wow, I made that trade, and I I now need to take a shower. Okay, and so are you aware of your stress? And if you're not aware of your stress, then you're not really necessarily managing your head, okay? So, you know, if I'm, it, like today, I had to get up out of my chair and walk away from the screen because I got frustrated this morning. And I know that I cannot do anything rational or any, I can't do planning. I, I can't produce quality product for my subscribers or for myself or for my family 
in a mindset where I'm frustrated. I can't do it, okay? I have to leave my screen. I have to go outside and everybody does something different, okay? Some people work out, some people, you know, paint their nails or, or whatever. I mean, everybody has their thing, right? But you got to reset your headset and you got to figure out what works for you and how to do that. The worst thing you could do is just sit there, be frustrated and then revenge trade, okay? Or something yeah. like that, you know, that, that would be the worst outcome. If you're not thinking clearly and objectively, then you need to walk away until you can be thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know if that, and if you're, and this is one reason it's, it's important to have a plan beforehand. You don't want to have a situation where you don't really have a plan and it's entirely fluid. Um, mm -hmm. And you, I mean, because the thing is, if you have a plan, you know where your stops are, you know where your risks out, and 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 so on. And you're running your plan. You can walk away for period um, mm -hmm. and get your answer. Right. If you don't have a plan and you're watching it, and you don't know any stops and so on. Then it's very difficult to walk away. That's right. That's right. And and sometimes you need to. Um, any humans, um, which is most of us, I suspect, then um, you know we will we will have moments when we are more rational than others. Mm -hmm. um, and you know when you are frustrated, when you're. I mean, because the thing is, there's also a lot. I mean, I want to talk about rationalizations as mm -hmm. well, um, because again, people get into very destructive types of thinking, um, yep. which aren't rational but they feel kind of rational and that's the essence of a rationalization the rationalizations are there for a very good evolutionary reason you know we look around us we're assessing threats all the time yeah you know if you're a monkey in the forest then you know it's um, it matters um, and you rationalizations are where you put labels on things um, and I went to, uh, to a brilliant film called Big Chill where it uh, talks about, you know, it's um, rationalizations are the most important thing to us psychologically because you can't get through breakfast without seven or seven, seven or eight juicy rationalizations. And, and actually, we do it all the time. We need to be aware of them. Um, in terms of um, sitting in front of a screen, one thing that a lot of people think is unless they're trading, they're not working. Um, that's, so, that's a great one. That's a great they, one. Ergo, well, I have to push the button and spend money, right? They feel an urge to go into trades, but there's no plan on those trades. They are trading to pass the time, and then that brings us back, um, brings us straight back to: if you if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a proper rationalization, you are far more likely to lose money, and then you're liable to be working to make it back, and that's revenge trading. Um, mm -hmm. So what you taking a situation where you've created a problem by having no plan, um, by um, then escalating what you're doing without a plan. Because um, your plan is just to make back what you've lost already, um, and the market never, ever, ever owes you money. Okay. Um, you know, it won't feel any urge to pay you back. Um, and generally speaking, if you come in with the wrong mindset, you're going, you're more likely to lose money than make it. Yep. Um, revenge trading is always bad. Um, trading past the time is always bad. One of the key, one of the key things that a trader needs to be is patient. Um, you have to have a plan when you trade, and to make sure you're always trading with a plan, you have to wait for your mm -hmm. trade to, um, to be ready. That's right. The CL, CL trade. Um, we wait for waiting, days. Days. We've been waiting for a yeah. while, mm -hmm. um, and and you know, finally, the opportunity came, and we took it. So, um, but the thing is, you have to wait. If you go in, if you go in early because you don't want to miss it, you'll end up very underwater. And if then. Because you've always got to think of everything as 70-30, um, i.e. The, the higher probability path is the 70%, the other direction is the 30. If you're actually, if you're heavily underwater when you get to the actual inflection point and it goes the other way, um, then you have massively stacked the odds against yourself. It then becomes much more difficult psychologically to exit because you are taking that loss. And it's a big loss. It's no longer a small loss. It's a big mm -hmm. loss. Yep. Um, and, um, and again, entries are really important. And I just want to say this about losses. You should know what your loss is going to be before you enter the trade. You shouldn't be figuring that out in the middle of the trade. It's the worst time to be thinking uh, about about trading. I think the best time to be thinking about trading is after hours when you're not trading, okay, when you're doing your analysis and your planning for the next day or in the morning when you wake up and, and people do it differently. But, you know, you should know what your ante is to play the game, okay? And if you lose that ante, you're done with the trade next trade that's all you have and it, i think that's important because people that make up the, the what what loss they're going to take in the middle of a trade i'm sorry that you're really not disciplined as a trader and you can get yourself in big trouble that way in my opinion yeah 
Pretending, pretending to be disciplined um, to your um, to other people, or even worse, to yourself. Because yeah. um, uh, fooling yourself is something that people do all the time, and it's important not to. You don't make objective decisions when you are fooling yourself. Yep, absolutely. Let's talk, Jack, about the managing expectations part of trading, which I think is probably the most important. I, I say to people a lot, it's like, any swing, I want to capture 60%. And if I do, I'm happy, okay? And so this swing in, in oil, the, the thing we've been talking about, okay, we may see $40, we may not, we may see $38, I don't know. But I want to capture 60%, and if I do, I'm very happy. It's, it's a goal, okay? So what goals do you set for yourself? You know, are you the kind of trader that wants to make 10 handles a day? Do you think that's reasonable? You know, I think, I think if you make four handles a day, you're doing better than like 90% of the people in the world that are trading. Uh, seriously, so actually, the guy I was writing about in my um, um, William Blunt that I was talking about a couple of days ago. I mean, he was when we were trading with him. That's what he was saying to us: four handles a day, manage that consistently, and you will do very, very well. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I think expectations are and and expectations for a trade. Do I expect to make? Uh, do I expect uh, uh, you know forty dollar oil? Well, yeah. From a technical analysis perspective, I expect forty dollar oil. Am I going to make ten dollars on this trade? I don't know. I don't. And by the way, I can accept uncertainty. That's the other part of expectations: is I'm in a trade, I'm off a third, I got two thirds on. We're going to see how it develops, and whatever it is, it is, and I I I, I can accept it. Okay, I can accept. Uh, well, certainly accepting a profit is easier than than accepting a loss. But if before the trade, I know this is how much money I'm willing to lose. This is my ante to play the game, okay? And I lose that, guess what? There's no psychological damage for me. It's like I expected it, okay? So it's like it's not a, yeah, I was planning for it. Instead of holding on to a trade in and hoping that it goes the right way, or even worse, I was coaching this guy the other day, Jack, and he was telling me about how deep underwater he was. And, you know, I, I got into helping him understand like, what was your plan? How much are you willing to lose, et cetera, et cetera? And it was all about expectation, okay? It was all about expectation. Well, I'm expecting to make this much money on this trade. And as soon as you get into that in terms of having, uh, you know, something about money, uh, it, it, it's over. It's over. You need to focus on the process of trading, I think. That's probably most important. Because, again, apart from anything else, as soon as you're into money and as soon as you're expecting so much on a trade, you are assuming even if you haven't made a loss that the market owes you money. Yep. And it, and it is. Yep. Uh, your, your playing probability is you are fishing in the market stream. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, I, I, uh, shall we move on to reviewing performance, Jack? Or, uh, and, and I just want to encourage any other questions you guys have. We'll, uh, we'll answer them here in, at the end. Just wanted to say a couple of things on managing expectations. You've always got to make sure that your expectations are actually relevant to the real world. A lot of people don't do a lot of research, and then they have entirely unrealistic expectations. And you see this all the time in all spheres. I remember talking to a guy back in 2006, and, um, and he told me, he was in property, and he told me that property in Britain doubled every 10 years. Um, and I looked at him, and I said... Um, not being, it sort of slipped out. I said, yes. I said, it may, well, might well appear that way to a 10-year-old um, because that's what it's done over the last 10 years. I said, if you're extrapolating it forward to the next 10 years, is this a realistic expectation for the next 10 years? And the answer is probably not. And there's another one that I was reading about, um, and this was a guy talking to um, someone running a, um, you know, a, a room of, um, it was just basically a little stock trading club and so on. He was talking about his um, his targets, and he said they were pretty modest, nothing nothing, nothing, um, nothing out of the ordinary. He was looking for 20% a year. And this is just basically in straight investments in stocks. Um, and the guy looked at him and thought, wow. <laughs> it's not, an, not a realistic expectation in a normal year. Um, if you're just managing a stock portfolio. Um, and the guy, again, you know, it's not a realistic. You have to apply it to the real world. It's not about how much money you want to make. Um, that's not where expectations should come from. You need to be looking at, um, it's like the very core of analysis is being able to look at what um, the market is telling you and look at it objectively. You have to look at it objectively. Your yep. target needs to come from that. And you need to, you need to consider what is realistic and, and set something according to that. Because if you set your target too high, you will always fail against it. Yep, 
That's right. And then, and then the thing is, you might be making four to six handles a day, for example, trying to make 10, and you're really performing well, but you're beating yourself up about it. You know, that's, that's the other side of it. Well, um, you're deviating from your plans, trying to improve it. Uh, yep, exactly. Uh, Josh has a question, and I think it's a really good one. I find it counterintuitive to add to a winning trade. You've mentioned many angles on taking profits, but how do you paint a scenario to add to a winner? So let me give you a scenario here, Josh. Josh, let's look at um, let's look at like the S and P for example. Okay, so if I wanted to do pyramiding, which is one way of actually adding to a trade. Okay, number one, I don't have a position on right now at all in the S and P. Okay, if I'm pyramiding, I wait for a break, and I would wait right now for a break of 2,400. Okay, 2,400 breaks to the downside. I put on my first leg. I break weekly pivot. I, no, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I take that back. I break middle Bollinger Band, I put on my second leg. Okay, I break monthly pivot, I put on my third leg, and each one is doubled the size of the previous one. Okay, that's how I would pyramid into a trade, looking at certain levels in, in a, in, in a uh, and by the way, I would only look at a market that is really, really extended, okay? So like oil here really bounced up to 52s and we were like, we're against the trend line and we have, we, and, and we're, we're against the Fibonacci and all this other stuff. And we said, look, $40 oil, we got another leg down, all that stuff that we were, we were talking about. You could have pyramided today if you wanted to do that on a day trading basis. It's, it's about having levels and understanding, okay, I'm not in the trade, I wait for the break. The break happens, I put on a small piece. We break the second level, I put on double that size. I break the third level, which is a con which is really a confirmation level. Then I'm 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 doubling the previous size. So you know that's that's an example of adding to a winner, but it, it's a it's a conscious uh, plan in terms of adding to a winner. It's not haphazard. You 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 do that plan before you even put on your first leg. So that's an example. You have any comments on that, Jack? The the winning trade I, adding to it. I, I, I've got an example I'd like to use that um, might happen tomorrow. I say okay. might happen is because you know we're not actually psychic. Uh, we're just always playing. But I was looking at the oil chart, and this is something I mentioned on the Twitter feed today um, that we have a potential um, head and shoulder neckline at 48.45 approximately. And actually, that's pretty much what the low was today. So I mentioned that, and we made the low there. If that low, which will probably need a retest, if that low actually holds, then we may go and form the right shoulder there. Um, now, that would that right shoulder high would ideally be back at weekly pivot. So what I'm thinking is, and this is something I mentioned to Stan earlier, was that we might well see a bounce from this area here back up to weekly pivot, and then a fail there um, towards um, what would then be on a break below today's low that was sustained, um, a break towards the 45 area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's the opportunity to add there? Weekly pivot. If it goes, makes the target. You can draw it. You can draw trend lines up. You can have it consider carefully. You have an add opportunity there. No yeah. question about it. Yeah. And that is the way to add to a winning trade, um, because it's it all comes down to um, identifying the trend, buying dips, selling reps. And yeah. now here, this is overall a short trade. You're selling reps. That's that is a um, a predictable rip that may well happen tomorrow, and is an obvious yeah. add opportunity. And 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 by the way, that is that is called massaging the trade. So when you're whenever you have an instrument that overlaps, like copper, is a great instrument for that. Where you can, you know, you, you take off a third, it back tests. Okay, it back tests big. You put your third back on. Okay, so and you can continue to massage your trade, you know, in 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 the direction of the trend. Of course, I think the issue a lot of people have, and I see subscribers doing this a lot. They trade both sides of the trade. So there's going to be somebody out there, Jack, who's going to say, I'm going to do this counter trend trade that, that Jack just said. And they're going to get into that trade. It won't make target. It's going to go against them, and they're going to lose. And this is what worries me the most, folks. I think that you know when we're in a trend uh, with, like oil is right now, okay, and you're doing a counter trend trade, are you aware that it's a counter trend trade and that it carries more risk? And is and, that and is that part of your plan? Are you legging out a third early, putting your stop to even, you know, et cetera, et cetera? So uh, I just want to mention that as well because that's something I see a lot. Sometimes people are playing both sides of what we say, and you know, I, I think from a day trading perspective, you can do that. But I think swing trading, both sides of of of, of oil for, for, uh, right now, is uh, is actually uh, dangerous. 
Well, the problem is the problem is that you're always talking about a probability that you'll get a. I mean, you're you're looking at the higher probability scenarios. That doesn't mean they're actually going to play out that way. Yeah. Um, and right. If they if they do play out, and um, they may not play out in quite the way you were imagining they would play out. Um, so, I mean, the fact is, there's an awful lot of um, reality is more fluid than that. Um, problems that you can get here. So you can easily turn a winning trade, and you can miss most of it. Um, you know, get 10% or even make a loss just by trying to play both sides when you haven't identified the right places where it's actually going to bounce. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, or, or, or the short-term reversals. Um, really, what you're if you're actually taking off your whole short position on oil here and it hits 45 tomorrow, you missed half of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've missed half the move. And then, it worse, if you then pile back in there because you don't want to miss the rest of the trade, it might then bounce three bucks. Um, That's right. Yeah, because because um, the fact is they do rally every so often. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is be patient enough to wait for the right entry and then take it. Mm -hmm. it, has to be, it has to be a planned process and it has to put the math in your favor. Absolutely. So um, let's talk a little bit about reviewing your performance. And um, what I notice about traders is this. If I ask them a question, so like when you trade oil or when you trade the, the mini or when you trade commodities, you know, what is your maximum drawdown? And I hear crickets. Or, I, or, or I'll say, so what's your hit rate? You know, what's your win rate on oil? And, um, and, and they don't know. And the thing is, in terms of managing risk and also your psychology, it's good to know that. Okay, it's good to know that, hey, with, with uh, soybeans, I have a win rate that's like 40%, okay? Whereas with oil, my, my win rate is 70%. And, and, and so which one are you gonna trade more confidently, okay? So the confident mindset thing is really backed up by real data, okay? The other thing that really is useful is, uh, you know, if you're in a slump, you'll be able to see that you're in a slump and you'll be able to, to diagnose that and maybe fix it or, or figure out what's going on. And um, the other side of that is your win rate and also your drawdown, it helps you figure out what your position size should be. Okay, so, you know, uh, some people use a, a standard rule of thumb, you know, I should not, you know, bet more than 20% of my, my overall money on any one trade. And that's probably a pretty good rule, rule in terms of a, you know, a, a rule of thumb. But you know, if your win rate is 70% in an instrument and your maximum drawdown is really small, um, you could risk more than that. Okay, so we're, we'll be talking about money management in one of the next webinars, okay? But I think reviewing your performance has, it, it, it can reinforce for you, um, you know, uh, a confident mindset. And it can also reinforce for you uh, the kind of planning you need to be doing for certain instruments. So, you know, every Saturday I'm going through performance and I'm going through stats and I have spreadsheets on every instrument I trade. So, and you got to keep them, you got to keep them, you got to keep track. And I, I think it's critical uh, to your learning and to your position size assumptions. And uh, it, it, it has a lot to do with your overall confidence as a trader as well. Any comments yep. about uh, reviewing performance, Jack? No. Well, I wouldn't disagree with what you said. Yep. I think we, um, I think if people are keeping their review of their performance just to watching their account balance, then they're missing a lot of the important details. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a question from Patrick, and Patrick, if you could clarify this, is there trading software to recommend? Now, what do you mean by trading software? I'm not sure I'm clear about what that is. Are you talking about uh, trading software as in platforms to trade from and I'll wait, I'll wait for him to answer Jack but what do you what, what, uh, in terms of trading software um, uh, do you have any thoughts well in terms of in terms of recording your trades and um, I could strongly recommend Microsoft Excel yeah. um, which has got pretty much everything you need for you know doing some interesting stuff with numbers I think the um, I think is there software which will do it all for you I don't know, and I'm not sure I'd trust it if it did. Ninja does a really good job of, of uh, analyzing your trades and looking at max drawdown and your, your biggest winning, you know, uh, biggest losing, and it does all the stats for you. So, you know, if you're looking for a piece of software, now you can't enter your trades in it, but if you trade off of it, um, uh, basically, uh, oh, for accounting, for taxes. Well, most of my accounting uh, is done by 
the houses that I trade from. Okay, and I get statements from them at the end of the year and they're doing uh, the accounting and I can download transactions and put them right into my software and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I make sure any any uh, any any firm that I'm trading from any clearinghouse that I'm actually working with a clearinghouse that has a year end statement that I can download. Okay, otherwise it's horrendous doing taxes. It's really like it's it's a killer. Okay, so re really strongly encourage you to 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 to, ch to uh, check that out. Any any comments on that, Jack? No, 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 no. I think Ninja. I would um, make one point. I haven't actually used Ninja myself, but I've definitely heard good things about it. And what I would say is, you can trade directly off it if you're if it's paid for. Yep. Uh, um, if you pay, if it's paid, linked through, and you can actually trade directly from Ninja. And uh, and I do, and uh, it's a good platform, especially if you like to do <clears throat> algorithms. So it's 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 one I would suggest. Uh, and uh, okay, we have another question, which is uh, Alex has a question about what do you keep on your spreadsheets in terms of uh, stats and and so on and so forth, entry, exit, uh, and process of trade. Jack, yeah. Yes. Yeah, entries, exits, um, rational. Yep, I think I think there are two tools that that you should have as a trader. You should have a log, which Alex is what you're talking about, okay? And then I think you need to have a spreadsheet that is going to capture, um, you know, your your entry and your exits, plural, okay, with the dates of the trades and all that kind of stuff, and the math in terms of you know, how much the loss was and, and how many contracts and all of that, a, a spreadsheet, okay? So, you know, the log that contains your entry exit and your process so you can learn from, I think that's one thing, but you need a detailed spreadsheet of the trades and then from that list of trades, you determine your maximum drawdown, peak to trough in terms of your biggest profit to your, your biggest drawdown in terms of what is that in dollars, okay? You need to look at what is your biggest winner your biggest loser, how many losing trades in a row have you had maximum, okay? And that has to do with their tables on the internet in terms of, you know, looking at position size, and that's something we'll talk about in the next webinar, but, you know, uh, risk, uh, catastrophic risk of loss, okay? If you have uh, in your history of trading the E-mini four losses in a row, okay? Um, and there, there are tables out there that'll tell you, um, and, and, and your win rate is, 55%, okay? Uh, it, there are tables out there that will tell you you should never have a position size over X, otherwise you risk catastrophic loss, okay? So, you know, there are certain stats I think you need to keep as a trader so that you can really manage your position size and as you improve, you can actually increase your position size. But I think that uh, my comments about position size are this, if they're not statistically determined, okay? What happens is this, okay? You show up trading the E-mini and you have a good week and you're trading three handles, right? And then the next week you say, well, I'm really trading well. I'm gonna trade nine handles. And then boom, you have a bad week. And it's, it, by the way, trading nine handles from three, or I'm sorry, handles, I mean, I mean contracts. So trading three contracts and then trading nine. Uh, if you're gonna have a really bad week, it's gonna be, you know, really bad. Uh, if it's three times your normal size. And, the other and actually, you're much more likely to have a bad week because the fact that you've got more risk out there will change your behavior. It will change your mindset, absolutely. The stress would be, and so, so, you know, the thing about stats is this, I have a level of confidence because I know my stats work and I know that my position size stuff works. So when my stats say increase my position size, I'm comfortable. Okay, and it's it's being determined off of my track history, and so that's 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 really important. I think that position size a lot of people guess, but I think if you're a trader, you need to be systematic as much as you can. I think uh, the more mechanical and systematic you can make your trading, the better. And, and uh, yeah, what I was about to say was, um, really, in so in so far as possible, you need to trade off plans, and you need to trade like a machine. Um, you need to your your trading is about executing a plan. Uh, you might have given a lot of thought to the overall setup and put quite a lot of work into the plan, but once you have a plan, you need to execute the plan. And if there's a major deviation, you don't, um, generally speaking, I've seen I've seen traders who are really good at rescuing trades, um, but actually, I don't think it's a skill worth learning. 
Um, I think most people are actually far better off just exiting and moving on to the next one. There is a skill set to trade repair, but uh, I would say you have to be a pretty advanced uh, trader uh, to yeah. be able to do it, and you have to be really good with position size. I've done it because I've gotten myself into trouble with trades, and I never capitulate at a high, but at the same time, it's not something that, that it's something we maybe should do. We, we should do a webinar on that, actually. That's a great topic. Um, we probably should, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a great topic. Uh, you may not be able to answer those questions with futures, but do you report each trade or the total profit and loss for the year? Are you talking about taxes? I mean, you have to report your actual transactions along with your total profit and loss for the year. They're, 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 uh, I, I do both. I mean, I, I follow the tax code here pretty pretty uh, uh, like by the book, I've never been audited. So um, this may be covered in another webinar, but do you have a rule of thumb stop strategy? Setting stops at the initiation of a trade helps preserve sanity. Um, watch the previous webinar, Josh. Josh, go to our May webinar. I'm sorry, is it the May webinar page? I think it is. I think I'm like April, possibly, but I think. Um, yeah, there's a previous. Yeah, the, 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 the part one of risk management talks about that explicitly and different ways of, of using stops. I think that's, uh, and that's a long, and by the way, that's why we dedicated that webinar to that because it is a very rich topic and frankly, one web webinar doesn't do it justice. Okay, Jack, I think that's the end of our question. Somebody else may have a question. I'll let them type it while we talk. Is there anything else in our outline that maybe we missed or, or that you want to emphasize or anything else you want to talk uh, about? I don't think so, but I think the um, I think I just want to repeat that it's really you've got to always trade with a cool head. Um, there are so many ways in which your, um, your stress can drive you to do things which are destructive to your trading performance. Mm -hmm. and distract your trades. Um, a lot of your automatic reactions are going to be the wrong ones. Um, this is why it's important to have a plan and why it's important to stick with it. You have to trade like a machine. I know it's unnatural to do that, um, but you've always got to have a clear objective plan and way of implementing the plan. And really, in terms of money, it's best never to think about it as money. That's right. I fully agree with that. And and the other thing I want to say is this. If I can make a, this comment to everybody and a, a, as sort of a closing comment, if I think about uh, the webinars that we've been doing for years now, and we have a huge trader education library, okay, which I'm going to be adding these new webinars to it here shortly. But, you know, if we do a webinar on chart chat on a Sunday, okay, first Sunday of every month, we have... 170 people, sometimes more. So we've had up to 400 people in these webinars, okay? Because it's about technical analysis and what's going on in the market and what, where's the turn and where's the support and where's the resistance, you know, that kind of stuff people are really interested in. And in this webinar, we have 80 people. And I will say this, psychology of trading and investing is always under attended, it's always undervalued. And the stuff we're talking about here, guys, it's as important as technical analysis. And the other thing is trading systems, okay? That's equally important as well. I think that, that these three elements in this little circle here, I think, I think they're all three very, very important. And this is probably the most undervalued aspect of, uh, of, of trading, in my opinion. So, um, you know, I, first of all, that means, uh, you know, kudos to all of you for coming and attending, okay? Because uh, I think it's important. And um, uh, I, I think that this is, this is the edge that gives traders an edge. Okay, because you can have the best technical analysis in the world. If you don't have the head to execute it, you're done as a trader. You're just done before you start. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you can be the best technical analysis, analyst in the world. In fact, you can actually know. If you knew the future and you knew the main points about where price would be, you can still lose money with bad trading. Absolutely. Even with um, because, um, you know, you can size your positions badly, you can get panicked out, and there are so many issues with psychology that you have to be disciplined about, because at the end of the day, the skills which make a good analyst aren't the same skills that make a good trader. At the end of the day, psychology is hugely important um, to success, any sort of success in trading. Um, and unless you master, you master your own psychology, um, your chances of um, being consistently trading profitably aren't that high. Yep, and I, th I think uh, mastering it means self-awareness. 
So know when you're in it, know when to walk away, et cetera, et cetera, all the stuff we've already said. So, okay, so with that said, guys, um, I think that's a wrap, Jack. And everybody, thank you for attending. And uh, Jack, great job as always. Yeah, pleasure as always, mate. Yep, anyway, same here, Jack. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.